two that really stood out for me that actually made it into the show. And, and they were Danny and Bevan. Uh, and Danny was about nine. She was this little cute little kid. And she sang her song. And there was a few bum notes here and there. And, and we all looked and said, that was lovely, darling, lovely. And, but she couldn't dance a lot either. And Youngie came up to me after the, uh, the audition and said, she's in. And I said, great. <laughs> and it was great. Danny was a great success in the show for many, many different reasons. screaming kids saying, I don't want to wear that. If this world makes you crazy and you take an eye of camping, you I don't know where my old tapes are. I'm sure they're in a box in the attic somewhere. I hope somewhere, I don't know if Channel 10 has them stored, but wasn't there a whole lot of the tapes that got destroyed? There's a whole lot of shows that there's no record of. You'll get to like it. There was one moment that was so frightening. We were in a shopping centre and there was this huge crush and some people got hurt. It's obviously exciting because at the time we didn't know someone had been hurt. It was just like, you just felt like you are part of the Beatles. It was just like, ah! In the heat, the judges said the standard was very high, polished. <laughs> and the whole performance was very high. And altogether, a very professional act. So now let's take a look at the Lance Davies dancers. <laughs> Monday and Tuesday night would have vocal call at a studio which would go to straight from school and we'd be there anywhere between 9 and 11 o'clock at night. Wednesdays we'd either go and do our own singing lessons which was only a short amount of time or some press or something. Thursday, Friday we had dance rehearsals that would go to between seven and nine o'clock. It's hard for kids to keep their focus and you throw in an odd bunch of kids together and there's either fighting or laughing or farting or joking or burping and then we're all in hysterics and you know you can't get any work done. <laughs> I remember Joey Peroni had quite a temper on him and he punched the walls at the rehearsal studio and at Channel 10 one day but then I can't talk. I decked Bevan one day at rehearsals because he was getting on my nerves and he was daring me saying, come on, hit me here, hit me here. I said, don't, because I really will. And I've never hit, hit anyone before or afterwards, but I just went like this and he just went straight to the ground and he didn't dare me after that. I had a crush on Vince and we dated and um, that sort of entailed holding hands and, and snogging at rehearsals. That was it. One of Young Talent Time's most high-profile exports has been Danny Minogue, who joined the show back in 1982 as little Danielle Minogue. Asking nothing in return, Sometimes success can be elusive, and with no family or friends to help you through the lean times, it can be tough. I've seen 
Sally Boyden a few times, Tina a couple of times, Nelson, Tim Nelson a lot when he lived here doing editing and work. But mostly I see people back in Australia. But I'd love, I'd love to go to a reunion and see everyone. I think there was a board game of Young Talent Time or something like that. I'm not sure. Danielle always wanted, she approached John one time. She like was dead virgin. set, she wanted to sing like a virgin. <laughs> Where I always drew the line was there's a difference between being modern and being spunky and exploiting sexuality. Now, when you've got a 15, 16 year old girl that looked as gorgeous as Danny, as Danny looked, you could put her in a nun's habit and she'd still look so sexy. Do you know, there's, there's just nothing you could do. Some of the costumes were provocative. Um, and of course, because I always wanted to sing the Madonna songs and got that slot. I mean, she was always, you know, prancing around in a bustier and whatever. So that's what I wanted to wear, like every other 12 year old in Australia that wanted to be Madonna. <laughs> But then again, you know, we had our clown costumes and our lobster suits as well to kind of balance it out. We love Australia. I love you. It was always so emotional and so teary and, um, you know, heart wrenching that you were going to lose someone. And from all of us, good luck. I'm gonna have to get you trying just as hard as I can to get my Superman. When I left Young Talent Time, I got a manager straight away, which is often the, the hardest thing for people when they leave. And then, then other things just kept falling in my lap. And I have been incredibly, incredibly lucky. Once you get the chance, you have to put in the hard work. I think the more you embrace it and say, yeah, I was on it, it was brilliant, now I'm doing something else, the more people accept you. But I've definitely seen people leave the show who rebelled against it and then that brought on the curse themselves, I think. Quite a few young talent timers, life after YTT meant music theatre. Philip Gould and Jane Scarley have appeared in numerous musicals and recently toured Australia in Annie. Deborah Byrne, Jamie Redfern, Tina, Bevan, Danny, Trevor, Sally, Karen Knowles, Joe Perrone, Debbie Hancock, Mark McCormick and Vanessa Windsor all trod the board. That happened to her. I just, I, and I still can't believe it. I'm, I'm still shocked by it. Everything that I know now, it's because of Young Talent Time. That was my school. That was my life school. The best moment was the whole six years. If it wasn't for Talent Time, I don't think that I would be in the position that I am today. Best experience that anyone could wish for. When I was on Young Talent Time, I was in heaven. <laughs> If you look at the very first episode of Young Talent Time and look at the very last episode of Young Talent Time, it appears to be a totally different show. And yet it isn't, because the essence, the, the wholesomeness, Johnny and the kids, kids having fun, not serious, great music, entertainment in its purest sense, was there at the beginning and it was there in the end.